This is going to be a spark notes of everything that we talked about during our live stream earlier today. If you guys want the longer format of my live stream, please check out my broadcasts. It should be stored in there, but it was like four hours long. So this is the spark notes of everything from the DLC trailer that came out earlier this morning. First off, Peggy some of you guys clocked in the chat that this robed figure at the very beginning of the trailer might be Melina. They have the same color palette as Melina. I'm not quite sure about the shoes. I know Melina wears boots, but it's difficult to see here. Presumably, this is just Melina leading us to the DLC entry point. There was an IGN interview with Miyazaki that confirms that touching Mikola's hand does lead us into the Shadow Realm. And there's also a little quote at the end of this where it says, like, touch the withered hand, come with me or whatever. I'll get into that when we get to it. But an important thing is that I feel like this could also be Rico, who was a cut NPC. It could be Melina. Um, it depends on whether or not they want to, like, iterate on Rico at all. But Rico was a wandering noble type NPC who was beguiled by St. Trina in his dreams. And he was tracking St. Trina down to potentially find her. And during the end of his quest line, he's supposed to lead you to, like, M Moog's boss room presumably um, to save Mikola's body from withering away or falling apart. We don't know because the quest isn't finished, but ultimately it was supposed to tie in St. Trina and Mikola's story, although they still have some in-game items that reference that they're connected. The Fever's cookbook allows you to make a lot of Mikola's items. Their lilies match up together. And also we have a lot of the candle items that are in the Haling Tree prayer room that were dedicated to this wandering noble, the ghost, and him trying to track down St. Trina. These items are all used interchangeably. Um, we also have the dream mist cut item that was supposed to be an item in the game. Where it's like a black orb where you're able to store the dreams or like memories of people. And I kind of wonder if that's how the Shadow Realm works. Is that like it's a reflection of the lands between, but like our memories and maybe things that we want to like seal away or repress. So let's keep going. He wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. Oh, we already we already know what his withered hand looks like, if it's anything. There is nothing more terrifying. So I'm already having to stop really quick. I think maybe there's a better, yeah, right, coming up. So I, we, we talked about this during the stream, but these are baldekins. I was calling it baldachin during the entire stream. But for those of you that are unfamiliar with what that is, it's like a little ring of tapestry that you can hang above like a bed or a bedchamber. It's actually hung up in Marika's bedchamber. Let me pull up an image really quick. Hold on one sec. All right, so here is a picture of Queen Marika's bedchamber and the baldachin that hangs above her bed. And here's like these big pieces of fabric that seem to be coming from this light that's above the two trees. Um, this is also what looks like a, we can actually get some better lighting, but I went over this on my um, DLC image review for analysis. It definitely looked looks like, ugh, sorry for the stutter, I'm going to stutter a lot during this video because I've been talking for four hours. It looks like there is a tree that's right here, and it looks like there is another tree or plant or death root <laughs> wrapping itself around this tree. So it looks like there are two trees, and one of them is kind of strangling the other, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. Oh, wait, I wanted to talk about the Baldekin. Um, For those of you that don't remember, Baldekin Blessing is what Fia gives you, and Fia is um, somebody who is able to enter the deathbed dream, and she's able to, like, reinvigorate dead lords with the souls of champions. So she acts as, like, a vessel. So um, soul energy gets stored in her when she, like, lays with a champion, and then it gets passed on to a dead noble Hopefully giving him like a second life is the practice that she engages in. But the um, Baldachin is kind of like you're entering the deathbed dream. Like you're you're in this like dream with a spirit. And there's this tie-in between the spirit realm and dreams as we've seen with the content of Mikola and St. Trina. So yeah. 
death and dreams are very loosely related, and it seems like this shadow realm might also be related somehow too. But I love the Baldekin imagery that's happening here. That torrent. I also love there's so much overgrowth happening. There's um, a lot of this like really gnarly, gnarled looking tree coming um, up through like the the can even see it like over here it's coming up through like the earth but it's also in some of the buildings you can see it like breaking through some of the buildings which i'm still in the death root brain it's not like confirmed that it's death root but like i still think that death root is growing in this other world here is presumably um mikola's oh, sorry presumably mikola's rune because the character gets that emote the sideways rune on the side um, but it looks like it's sticking out of the grass right here. It's actually like planted in the grass like a flag. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. Then I also made a post about this armor is actually super fascinating. It seems kind of um, like arbitrary or like just kind of like cool. Like, ooh, we might get this armor set, cool equipment, you know, but there's actually some pretty heavy lore here. Um, we definitely have some uh, Tanith representation, Tanith and house of um Mar is it marai malay marai um they wear these like really interesting almost burial masks over their faces and it looks so much like tanith's mask from the way that the eyelids are made tanith is from a land that's far away so presumably tanith and the magistrate and like everybody who lives at the shaded castle may have come from this land that we're seeing now and something else that's really cool is this sword is very Godfrey Crucible era inspired because Radon, who is like Godfrey fanboy number one, has the same motif on his sword. And in the item description, it's called the Lion's Mane motif. So we get a lot of this like Lion's Mane depiction on these swords, which is like fucking sick. So hopefully we get some like Crucible era Godfrey stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's play again. In that forsaken place. Got some jars. Lord also, there's a um I'm assuming this is an enemy. I'm not quite sure what this is. Um, but like their hands look kind of withered. They're wearing these like, once again, pr presumably burial masks almost. But there's some purple lilies in the background that look very Saint Trina coated. So I'm curious to see if we're going to go into you know, like a dream state or a dreamland. I mean, we're going into the Shadowlands, but like, is this confirmation that the Shadowlands are the dream? I, I, I just want to see like how the metaphysics of it all works. So it's exciting. So this is also very interesting. Something else that we clocked on stream. Um, let me pull up this picture really quick. All right. So I clocked that this person in the Carrion study hall's hourglass it's doing um a it's doing a symbol it's only using one finger but it's doing like an as above so below hand sign and it's really interesting because in the cuckoo like church chamber we see it sitting upright but then when we go into the study hall we flip it upside down and it inverts the tower so it's this idea of mirrors and um of kind of like mirrored realities or mirrored states, which you love to see. Also, sorry, Cooper needed to jump off my lap. But we have this this person who some people believe that this is a man. Um, and there is a depiction of this person on like the Dectus runes or like the the elevator rune, runes, you know, like the medallions. Um, some people believe that this is like the man that's depicted on that. I'm curious if it's a man or if it's like an older woman. Either way, um, it seems like they're associated with the Carrion royal family because they're sitting in a hall surrounded by a bunch of um, bird cages. There's bird cages all over this, all over the place. Ugh. It, this looks like the Carrion, like the Carrion study hall or like the Carrion manor. The architecture is like pretty on point with Carrion architecture. These right here, I actually didn't notice at first, but somebody in stream chat pointed this out to me. These are glintstones. This isn't fire. It's not animated to be fire. They're like glowing glintstones, which is pretty, pretty rad. I don't know if you guys could see that. There we go. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like carrion royal family stuff that's still carrying over into this new land.
is awesome. Love to see it. Your fellows. They are truly faithful. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck this area is, but y'all know. I mean, my username is Quaylog. <laughs> y'all know I love me a swamp. I love swamp levels. I'm excited to go here. This kind of looks architecture wise um quite modern almost like maybe shaded castle adjacent but i'm excited given the poison themes so um next point this man right here is going to be important later i'll point it out he's the guy who's pulling like the big sword thing out of his head um that's like planted above his eye we'll see him again later this character though i want to know about her tell me about her she's got wavy black hair Beautiful, fantastic. But um, they're giving me, like, I don't know, some people were saying Fia's cloth. Like, maybe this is his deathbed companion. But I'm also curious if there's any relation to the Malai, the Murray Malai family at all, just because we have, like, this picture of, like, a, a swamp forehand. But they may not even be in the swamp stage. Maybe it's just, like, a false equivalency my brain is doing but yeah let's keep going we got more of the jarberg jars or like the jars that are used to store bodies to act as fertilizer for the earth trees they're planted around the minor earth trees to prevent them from withering it's just human fertilizer so it's interesting that we see them here strung up and not around plant life kind of wonder why that is um but they act as containers for warriors and like there's a lot of the coliseum themed stuff happening so, I'm curious. This, I don't know what this is. What is, I don't know what this is. There's like a spinning thing. Where are we? What is this? I don't know. Um, <laughs> this castle, we talked in depth about it, but this one is like crazy. There are these registers that go across the entire front face of this gate and it's all people. It's like very um, excessive. Like art history wise, you don't see reliefs like this going all the way from the bottom to the top. It's very excessive. So it kind of shows that there's like this really insane story or like family history surrounding this building. So I'm curious to see what this is about. Um, but you can check to see like in this upper corner, kind of by the baldachin coming down from the ceiling, the the skybox, you can see some black roots that are kind of disintegrating the top of this structure. Really interested to see if we get some Godwin action later in the DLC. Here's the Wicker Man. We've talked about on this channel the Maypole Festival and some other um, Celtic and Scandinavian inspired festivals regarding the seasons and the Briar in particular has already been, or sorry, the Briar, the Briar Wicker Man has already been talked about by Miyazaki in an interview where he talks about how it was a form of punishment so this is associated with sin but he was saying that um stores of people were loaded up into this giant wicker man and burned alive you can actually see the people hanging out of the uh fists of this enemy so got lots of burning immolated folks that are being punished and it's really interesting that punishment and like sin are sometimes associated with the sun in this in this world. So, for example, the dung eater has the big sun pendant hanging around his chest, but it looks like this giant, um, you know, emblem of the sun sitting on the the wicker man is really interesting. But it looks like it's made out of omen horns, which is wild because the uh, once again the dung eater also has to do with omen too. So curious to see how it all links together. Here we have a worm face that's actually just a worm the whole way down. And then we get the moon in the background and it looks purple. I love this enemy design so much. This is my favorite boy. This is my favorite boy from the DLC so far. He looks like he might be grafted. Um, he has two sets of human legs on top of this like big... He's kind of like a... I don't want to say human centipede, but he is kind of like a centipede. <laughs> Um, you can see his back legs over here. They're human legs. So this is interesting. Um, lots of aspects of the Crucible in this DLC, and we'll see it more. We have horns, wings, lions, 
Um, a lot of like misbegotten coated stuff. The hair on this on this lion creature is very misbegotten. Um, so I'm curious to see if we're gonna get some lore about Radagon. Curious to see because um, the misbegotten, especially the Lionel ones, are um, called Radagon's children in the game files. I'm curious to see if we're gonna get Crucible information. I'm curious to see why Marika's offspring have horns. I'm curious to see where that comes from. So hopefully we'll get some answers. So, here's Mesmer. He's the flagship boss on the DLC. For those of you that don't know what this means, he's like the equivalent of Artorias and Dark Souls 1 or Lady Maria in the Bloodborne DLC. There's always a flagship boss, but he's not... The flagship enemy is not always the final boss. There might be more bosses. There's always hidden bosses. So, like, Manus was kind of the big reveal in the Dark Souls lore, and in um, Bloodborne it was Orphan Koss who was the big reveal. So I don't know, even though he's the flagship guy, I don't know if he's the last guy we fight, but I'd be curious to see how the rest of this plays out. He also has a baldekin, but behind it is a big statue, and somebody got a really good high-res image of the statue. Hold on, let me see if I can pull it up. So as you can see here, it is a statue of a woman that seems to be embracing a baby like swaddling and at first my initial reaction was like oh my god glomide queen because the glomide queen is known to swaddle her infants in the skin of a god but somebody else pointed out based off of the marika crucifixion statues that she actually has the jewelry of queen marika so she has like the the arm bracer and like her her attire kind of looks more like queen marika's so the fact that he's talking about lordship here He's asking his mom, um, like, about lordship, which is very much like a Queen Marika question, you know? So it makes sense that he's one of Marika's children. Also, the fact that his name starts with an M, Mesmer. Um, a lot of Queen Marika's children's, or children's, or Radagon's children, are named after, like, the first letter of their name is one of the parents. So it seems like, yes, he has Radagon's red hair, but his name starts with an M, so this kind of confirms this potential union between Marika and Radagon again. But it, we don't know who this man is. Like, we've never heard Mesmer before. So either he was, like, a child that was kept in secret, or um, maybe he was born of somebody else that, you know, we don't know. Um, some of my uh, followers in the chat... Some people were kind of like speculating the multiple aspects of the self and that maybe Mikola is like Mikola, but then Mesmer is like their masculine self and St. Trina is their feminine self. Um, there's a lot of speculation around who Mesmer's identity is, but I'm excited to meet him. I will say, though, um, his weapon looks so similar to Rikard's and his um, armor silhouette is very similar to the red dragon silhouette the red drake armor silhouette and he has like these draconic eyes let's see them in a second oh another thing well so here you can see his draconic eye he also has one eye that is closed so that's also very melina um there's also this symbolism with eyes in miyazaki's works surrounding um ignorance so the hand is grasping the orb which is also a metaphor for an eye that's literally like Gideon's staff. So there's like a lot of metaphors regarding like eyes being blown out or like the blood drunk hunter's eye or eyes being closed or eyes being sealed. It usually means that somebody is ignorant to something. They're only seeing half truths. Something isn't revealed to them yet. There's something that is happening with this character that he's blind to. Um, so we'll see what that is. Another important thing about this character, he does have flame that's really similar to Rikard or to the Briars of the Sin. It's very, like, a deep red, like the Fire Giant's red. Um, but there's some weird black shit <laughs> that he's channeling. There's some weird darkness. Um, and he doesn't, he doesn't, it seems like he has an affinity with darkness. He's not, like, of the light. He's not a being of the light. So...
Um, these enemies here have omen. Um, they seem to have the same skin tone as that one that was sleeping by the St. Trina lilies. They're holding little candle trees, which are also, we see that shield. There's a candle tree shield in the game. Um, that's tied to this as well. Um, and then there's also like the omen horns that are happening. But yeah, these enemies are super fascinating. We don't get to see them for very long, but I'm curious what their story is. Blowing the flame. There's these uh, darkness enemies. They kind of seem like shadows of regular enemies. I also see um, what looks to be like a big... It almost looks like the uh, Baldekin is like gathering on some of these buildings, potentially. There's a big like sheet of fabric that's just draped over everything. It's black. It reminds me a lot of Fia. I'm getting a lot of Fia in this. I know she's like not a part of this story. I know that her story and Godwin's story are kind of sealed away, but maybe maybe she'll maybe her and Godwin will show up again in this dream. I'm willing to bet that they do. Yeah. This move is for the girly pop. This is this is the girly pop girlies. This is for this is for the girlies for sure. The girls, gals. Um, I love these little crucible lion statues too. But this move is so sick. <laughs> Also, I'm going to make a martial arts character. Can't stop me from kicking like this all across the lands between you. Cannot stop me. Big bombs. We get a craftable massive bomb. Amazing. Uh, love this like machine gun crossbow. Love this heavy armor. Are you kidding me? Um, this big ass, what looks like bear dragon incantation. That looks like Grail's Roar. I'm willing to bet this is going to be arcane scaling. I think that like, also, so I think it's both Zuli and Vati believe that the bears are turning into dragons or are dragons. I think that this is definitely confirmation that they're like associated, <laughs> like that they, that they're, there's something going on with the crucible in this one. Um, something that's really interesting about this bear is that his hair is red too. So it's got that Radagon red hair, which is like, also plays into the whole Radagon, Lionel, um, Radagon's children, misbegotten thing. So I'm so curious about the Crucible and if we actually get to go there or to it, if it's like a being or if it's a, if it's the container within the tree that we were in, if there's just something, some kind of like container or some kind of space that is the Crucible. If we get more of that in the Steel Sea, it seems like we're going to get a lot of it. So this one was pointed out by Breebird in the chat that this is super interesting because this is very much the blue dancer in our world, but she's a red dancer and she's in a blue field. So the um, blue dancer sealed away rot, which is red. This red dancer seems to be in, in like a field of blue. And somebody else, I think it was Lance McDonald um, in, the, in the chat when we were talking about, we definitely think that these might be be boats. This one right here looks like the end of like a ship and then this one right here also kind of looks like a ship. So kind of interesting setting. We also got some of the um, Leyendel grave markers over here. Have a big, you know, boar rider. This is interesting though because I'm getting um, gravity. I'm I'm getting gravity from this man, but I'm I'm curious to see what he's about. Big hippo, hedgehog, porcupine. This is also awesome imagery for the aspect of the crucible. It's like very animistic, but then there's also like tree branches coming off of it, similar to like our ancestral spirit. So we love tree imagery. We love it here. This man, I need to know more about. Like, is this black shit death root? Is it a mimic tear? What are we looking at here? Like this horse is melting. This horse is melting. It's definitely got some pale rider imagery. Um, the pale rider is just like an image of death. This down here definitely looks like, um, God, it's so hard to say. There's a piece of me that wants to say this definitely looks like a mimic tear, but seeing the way that the flesh is ripped away almost looks like it's decay. This looks like it's decay. This looks like death root. 
the more that I'm looking at this, the more I'm seeing death root. Correct me if I'm wrong. What do you guys think? So this, this, I want to, I want to draw this. Like, this is the most, like, insane visual I've seen. This is the most insane visual. Like, this man, you can kind of see he's, like, on his knees. You can kind of see, like, his hollowed body in the back. I need to get, like, a picture so we can, we can football, we can football draw on this. Hold on. Let me, that's just good football. Hold on. All right, excuse the YouTube line. But um, here, so the, this would be his butt, and then here are like his knees going down, and then this is like his hip, what looks like the back, his back, but, and then here's his rib cage. It looks like, <laughs> this is just like the, <laughs> the funniest image, okay, <laughs> it looks like this tree, or um, somebody said it looks like the rune from the Elden Ring, like the, the rune arc. It almost looks like the candle tree too. If like each thing was on fire, um, is being it was it was shoved into this guy's head, and it's mutilating his eyes, um, and it's like going in through his face. The most metal imagery ever. I'm getting a little bit of King and Yellow, but we're not getting you know our. I mean, we don't know his story yet, so we'll see if there's any like ancient magic associated with this man. But we do know. We do know that this man is the man from the painting at the beginning of the trailer. So there's a man who's next to that woman with the black wavy hair. This one. This is this man. They have the same little brooch. And it almost like it's it's quite interesting because it almost looks like Gideon's seal. I know it's not though. I know that's not Gideon. But it almost looks like Gideon's eye seal situation. God. I think also, too, another thing associated with Mesmer's imagery, and I can get into it in another video, but he definitely has the spear of long, longinus, long, longinus. I can never pronounce that. Um, there was the warrior that pierced Jesus when he was on the cross, that, like gave him a little poke. Some people have wondered where that shard of destined death came from that is piercing Marika's uh, ribcage, because it's very... It's very uh, Jesus coded. Um, I always thought that it was because we took the rune of destined death from Malaketh that it was then piercing Marika. That like maybe it just ended up in there after we unsealed the Erd tree. I kind of wonder if maybe he stabbed Marika, and then that could potentially be why she was she sealed him away. I don't know. The spear imagery, though, and the snakes and the kind of like warrior attire that he has going on is so fascinating to me. Somebody else also pointed out, too, in the chat that like his gauntlets are a little godskin coated. I see it in parts of his gauntlets, like like around the top portion, but there's a lot of like twin snake imagery happening here. He has like two snakes on his head and he has like the draconic wings on his shoulder pads and a bunch of other places. So he's kind of interesting. He has some Rikard, he has some Draconic um, stuff. He has almost some like God Slayer. Like he looks like a God Slayer apostle with um, how pale he is and his eyes, his eye color, like his face just looks like a Godskin apostle. He's got some really cool visual imagery going on. Somebody else also said a uh, red cape also kind of looks like uh, Rodrigo's cape. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. There is a really cool weapon here. This like uh there's the dual spear. So I'm assuming this is the spear of abundance decay, which was a cut item. It's supposed to be Melania and Mikola's twin weapon. Um and then it looks to me like there's this really cool shield that's almost like a spear that you can like I don't know. It's, it's sick. I love it. But then we also have our aspect of the crucible wings that are popping up here. I will not be far behind. Get more crucible. So also, um, I totally forgot to touch on this. The caption. 
Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. I feel like that might be Mikola or Saint Trina in spirit form talking about like if we sit at the guidance of Grace in Mo um, Mog's boss room, Mog's boss room, that we might hear this voice that's like, "Hey, touch the withered arm. I'll not be far behind. May, may we meet again." Um, because we follow, according to the interview that's on IGN, we follow in the footsteps of Mikola to understand their agenda, their decisions, and we also learn about Marika and Marika's decisions in the DLC, which is super rad. Excited. So, um, another little thing here that we can see is that it looks like this land has tons of mesmer spears, potentially. This could be other warrior spears, but it's hard to say. Everything's on fire as well. So, he also has some kind of like briar or like darkness flame thing that's in his. There's a lot of really cool, um, things that are depicted. There are a few. There's also this big ass tower. I want to climb that. I want to get up there. Put me up there. <laughs> but there's a lot of really cool stuff. Like some people were mentioning in the chat. Oh man, the nascent butterfly and the scarlet or the Aeonia butterfly. The Aeonia butterfly? Is that what it's called? Um, the rot butterfly and the nascent butterfly were definitely always Mikola and Melania. But the smoldering butterfly was, um, some people thought was Melina, third child. It never like sat right with me because the only time that we see Melina use fire is when she herself is caught on fire by the giant's forge, but she doesn't use fire in her moveset at all. She uses like um the like Erd tree stuff. So it's always been kind of interesting. Her nature has been super interesting to me. Like maybe I think, you know, most of us think and believe that she's the Glomide Queen because her eye was sealed shut. Um, but there's always been this really interesting connection with her and flame she walks alongside flame but she's not flame herself so i always thought that that smoldering butterfly connection was like kind of like tenuous at best so it's really interesting that we get like a fully flame elemental child and i love to see it and this is actually what makes me think that maybe mesmer is not an aspect of Mikola, but rather an actual third sibling um, because each butterfly represents each, each sibling um, there's also a little bit of the interview and I think on the website that talks about how Mikola is like looking, or not looking, but was awaiting their lord or the person that they were supposed to marry. Um, so that is like a plot point um, in the interview. There's also like Miyazaki says that we're going to be following, like I said, Mikola's footsteps, Mikola's goals, agenda, intention. We're probably going to find out like who Mikola was supposed to be married to or like what Mikola's fate was supposed to be in the long run. Um, but we're also going to find out about Mesmer. And I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to like put, I'm going to bet somebody $10 that I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that we're going to see Godwin, um, Deathroot, and potentially Fia. I'm willing to bet. Um, I unfortunately, so one of the things that I've been wanting answered so bad is like the divine, I just wanted to know what was up with the divine towers. I'm obsessed with the divine towers. I like, they're some of the coolest structures in the game. I was hoping we would get some divine tower stuff, um, like some conclusion as to why they're placed the way that they are or like what, who built them or, you know, was it the alabaster lords? Like, give me more alien shit. Like, I want more space stuff. But I don't think we're going to get that. Another thing I want to say, too, somewhere in one of the interviews, it talks about how this was the place that Marika first stepped. And whether that's like her first step in conquest or like where she was originally from is going to be interesting to see like what that means. Some of the interviews are translated very interesting. And it kind of makes me wonder if it's like intentionally vague or if the translations are just kind of weird. So I'm curious to see how everything comes to fruition. Um, but I'm very excited about Mesmer. I love his design. I love his design so much. Um, we also get this really cool emote. <laughs> Hold on. 
the Mikula ring emote for a pre-order bonus, which is very cool. Um, and then you can kind of see over here, I wish that we had a better image. You can kind of see the back of Mech looks to be going down the side. Maybe. Is that like the dream? feel and then some kind of like twisted helix and like fire it's hard to make out from here um so i'm excited to see what this looks like it also looks like it might be red glintstone in his spear too but yeah love his imagery we get a lot of like biblical sin baked into the design philosophy of this boy like like hardcore biblical sin, like destroying something that is that is uh coded as holy. He's like the destroyer of it. Um, if we're looking at like art history. Oh wait, I'm a dumbass. It's right here. <laughs> I can literally see it right here. Um, so yeah, this looks like the is that the uh draconic draconic seal? Hold on one second. All right. A lot of them kind of vaguely look like each other, but not quite. It's so interesting. Um, but we have this like really weird flame and then what looks like maybe potentially a symbol for, I don't know, a part of me wants to say this reminds me a lot of like Halig tree imagery, but it's, that's hard to say. And then we have the hermetic, um, you know, imagery of like Hermes and like his, his snake. What's really interesting is um, it looks like it's a two headed snake. Because the second stalk for the second head doesn't appear until like right about here. It has like one body. So it's really interesting. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to see the the uh like we talked about earlier with um the imagery of like Tanith's culture and Rikard and like the snakes and like the birthing rituals. I'm curious to see if that pops up again, especially given all the snake imagery mesmer. Um Super excited to see the St. Trina stuff, the Sleep Dream World stuff. Super excited to see if there's any Godwin Fia stuff, given the fact that we're in the deathbed dream at some points in the game. I'm so excited. I can't wait until June. It's going to be awesome. So yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy this. This is kind of like long as fuck anyway. So if you like more of this and you want to see me freak out, feel free to watch the broadcast. It's like four hours of this.